grace to you and peace from God, your Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the newborn King of Jew and Gentile alike, as the Holy Spirit testifies to you who have come this night to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. There's a contrast presented between Herod, the king of Jerusalem, and the kings of the Orient, who have seen the star that heralded the birth of the true king of the Jews, who have come from afar to truly worship him. You heard the words of Herod that he spoke to the wise men after he had learned from the teachers of the scriptures about where the Christ was to be born. You would think that the king of the Jewish people would have already known that. The prophecy of Micah, after all, had been around for 400 years by that time. And indeed, we ourselves know it well. He would be born in Bethlehem. How Herod didn't know really speaks volumes to the state of Herod's heart. When he speaks to the wise men and sends them off to Bethlehem and says, search carefully for the child and bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. The term worship means only the action of the body to bend the knee. It's a body action term. But if that's all it is, is the action of a body, then it's devoid of its spiritual significance. Herod didn't want to come and bow the knee to Jesus for anything other than to take him, to destroy him, to make him disappear. Because Herod hears what the wise men have declared. And he has learned from his own wise men what all of this means. That the Christ truly is the true King of Israel, of Judah, of God's people. Herod might claim a bloodline relationship to the great King David. But what God is seeking from Herod, even as he seeks the same from us all, is the worship of the heart. That our hearts would bow before the Lord even as we bow the knee. That's true worship. That's what gives it its spiritual significance. Herod wants nothing to do with that. He simply wants the earthly trappings of being the king of a fairly important kingdom in those days in the world. But this Jesus hadn't come to supplant Herod. Not in that way. Jesus has not come to establish an earthly rule, but a spiritual one. 
again in the hearts of his people. And he would include Herod and all of Jerusalem who are in on the charade that Herod is a true and pious man of God and worthy of the throne as king over God's people. They trembled at this news because Herod and his supporters knew he was an imposter king. But again, Jesus would have him rule and rule wisely and rule well, just like all the rulers of earthly government, even yet today. While Jesus is indeed king of the world, king of the universe, he rules in his spiritual realm. In the hearts of men, women, and children, First and foremost, this King Jesus has entered into us in our holy baptism. As the scriptures testify, we are baptized into Christ, and Christ is baptized into us. As the water is poured upon our bodies, this one enters into our bodies to reign from the throne of your heart. This is what the Word of God is intended to stir up. That continuing rule, righteous rule of Jesus over our lives. So that what He says is the watchword of our lives. Where He brings us, even as He spiritually brought those wise men from a very far away, following the star that was appointed, not only for them, but for any who would look into the sky, see that bright star, and know from the testimony of the Holy S Scriptures and the Holy Spirit where that star was leading, to the true star, Jesus, our Savior. Truly, you are wise men and women and children this night. For you have seen his star shining brightly in the pages of the Holy Scriptures. You knew that it means that he indeed has been born in the world, as we say in our celebration of Christmas. And now we join with our brethren from the East, who celebrate Christmas on January 6th. That's the reason for the 12 days of Christmas, to serve as a bridge from our celebration of Christmas in the Western side of Christendom, and then bridging that all the way to the celebration of Christmas on the Eastern side of Christendom. All of us joining together in the one faith, in the one Savior, born for us. That we might be reborn through our faith in Him. Reborn through the waters of holy baptism and rebirthed in every remembrance of that gracious gift of God. Which gives us a daily power to be truly wise. To seek truth and wisdom in the pages of Christ's holy book. So that we might be guided in our daily living. On how to love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind. In all the daily details of our living. In our households. In our workplaces. In our schools. In our communities. Around this world. And how, likewise, we truly show love to our neighbors as Christians in giving of ourselves and our time and our talents and our treasures, wherever we might be able to bless one of our fellow inhabitants of this world, especially our Christian brethren. And in this, 
we show ourselves to be truly wise and truly loved by the God who has granted unto you such great wisdom by his word and his spirit. Indeed, you have come to truly worship him. May you be blessed as you stand after kneeling before his manger and before his altar, filled with the power of your King. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.